and maybe it doesn't necessarily fit the criteria of what a designer would call appropriate. Picking the perfect kitchen cabinet color can truly make or break your kitchen. So this video, I'm going to show you some tips and tricks on how to select an awesome color for your kitchen cabinets. Now, something you all may not know about me is I had a brief stint in the real estate industry. And one of the many things I learned from that experience is that bathrooms and specifically kitchens sell houses. You all know this already. If you have ever been house hunting or just curious about the market, when you click on one of those listings and you scroll through the photos, you really get a strong sense of what the house is once you see that kitchen. And more and more people are getting their cabinets painted to refresh and revitalize the space without completely gutting the entire thing. Painting in general is just such a cost-effective way to not only spruce up a space, but also add considerable value in the process. So today, I really want to empower you and give you a couple of different approaches that you can take with cabinet paint so you can find that perfect color for your space. If that sounds useful to you, then let's hit the like button together and get on with it. To me, there are three primary categories of kitchen cabinet colors. You have white slash off-white cabinets, then you have your neutral colored ones, and the bolder dynamic accent colored ones. Pretty much light, medium, dark. So let's get into those. And then after that, I'll help you pick which one is going to be best for you. Let's start with the big kahuna, arguably the most popular style of painted kitchen cabinets, white or off-white. White has many advantages when you use it on your cabinets in your kitchen. The big thing is it looks clean, which is something that you'd wanna project in your kitchen, I'm assuming. But also it's going to be fairly easy to implement design-wise because you're not risking any color clashing with the rest of your decor. White is an interesting choice because in many respects, it's timeless and will always look pretty solid. But because it's such an effective color choice, there's gonna be a lot of other people using it. Personally, I don't let that bother me. I'm the type of person that says it's a cliche for a reason, because even though it could be overdone, it still might be the best choice for your kitchen in general. Going with a white or an off-white is a pretty safe place to start with your design. And then once you start piecing things together and you start involving the hardware or the handles, your appliances, your flooring, then you can really start to get a sense of whether or not you wanna try adding some color saturation instead. Some of the off-whites that I've seen used quite effectively are Oxford White by Benjamin Moore, which is a great compromise of something clean, stark, but not lifeless. That would be my choice for a clean, soft white. Decorator's White is Oxford White's close neighbor and has the slightest bit of gray added in. And this could be a good choice if you're incorporating some cooler colors nearby because then there won't be any conflict undertone wise. One of my favorite off-whites to use is much more of an off-white and it's called White Dove, which has a much more noticeable warmth present. The reason I like this color instead of something like Simply White, which is also warm leaning, is because its warmth feels a touch more creamy rather than a yellow based warmth, which in very rare cases can show flashes of green if you're bombarded with a lot of blue leaning light, especially in those north facing rooms, those pesky north facing rooms. There are countless other options that are totally viable, even Chantilly lace. <laughs> but I like to start with those three and then pivot from there. Oxford white for a soft white, decorators white for something a little bit more gray leaning or modern, and white dove for an approachable, warm, cozy feel. The second category is the medium colors or the neutrals. This is an immensely broad category that can include anything from your mid 70 LRV grayish colors like classic gray or silver satin, all the way down to some darker mid-tone taupes, for example. The way that I like to implement this type of color is to first focus on the surrounding wall color where the cabinets are located. And then I find a color to contrast it, not in color hue or temperature, but more so in the level of depth. It would be a similar principle that I described in our dark trim video, where we would just try and find a color that is maybe 30 LRV or light reflectance value points darker for your cabinet color. And the color should be in the same family. This is a lot easier to do if you have a color swatch like this, where all the colors on the swatch are within the same family. They're all closely related and they just mainly vary in depth. If you look at this color swatch, for example, these three look related, but one kind of feels a bit more greeny, one feels a bit more reddish, 
and this one just feels more yellow. So you don't necessarily wanna use this rule for every single swatch. But even if you have a single isolated color that you're starting with, you could still use some resources online to select darker shades of it. A lot of the major paint companies that exist will have this on their website, so make sure you double check first. This approach to picking a cabinet color is a little more on the subtle side of things. You won't have a massive thrust of color popping out at you, but it's a strategy that I personally used on my kitchen, mainly because there were quite a few design elements that I had in mind, and I didn't wanna make the space feel too busy. I'll leave a link at the end of this video showing my thought process on my cabinets, if you're interested. As for some neutral cabinet color options, like I said, there's probably more choice here even than there would be with off-whites, but it's going to largely depend on the color you already have on the walls. Just to throw out some examples, you could go for something like Revere Pewter or Thunder or even Collingwood as some potential options, but just double check that they mesh well with the rest of your kitchen. Finally, let's talk about the fun colors. These are the ones that you'll see all over Pinterest and in blogs, and they'll definitely be the most eye-catching choices, whether it's dark navy blue or a bright vibrant green, you can really have a lot of fun by implementing really saturated colors in your kitchen. A few questions I would ask myself though first is how long do I plan on keeping this color? Sort of a weird question to think about the end before you even get started painting, but it's a real consideration you should make. If you're picking a super bright color that you're just in love with, and maybe it doesn't necessarily fit the criteria of what a designer would call appropriate, but you don't care because it's your home and you absolutely love that magenta color, then more power to you. That being said, if you know a baby is on the way, for example, and you plan on moving in the next year for some extra space, there's a good chance your stager isn't gonna be too thrilled with that cabinet color choice. The thing about painting cabinets is it's usually a more costly process than just painting a wall, for example, especially if you're having it professionally sprayed. Even if you put that magenta in your powder room, not the end of the world because it'll be a lot easier to have that switched over to something more neutral when it's time to sell. If you're not in your forever home, then just keep in mind that you have to factor in what your potential buyer may like as well. And that doesn't mean just picking something boring either. Going with a color like Hail Navy is a wonderful combination of both beautiful and well-liked by lots of people. I've also noticed plenty of people going for a rich, dark pesto green and even black cabinets as well. Ultimately, it's whatever suits your space best, but going with some of those tried and true accent colors are usually a safer choice than the mega pop art dynamic ones. Once you have your color in mind, your next choice is where to use it. James, what do you mean? You would use it on the cabinets. That's what we're painting, duh. Well, I get that. But you could paint all the cabinets with this accent color. You could paint the upper cabinets or the lower cabinets exclusively, or you can even just paint the kitchen island. There are several different ways to implement a color without painting everything the same thing. And it could give the space more added dimension as well, which works especially well in those more minimalist style kitchens that maybe have a straightforward backsplash, for example. More often than not, I see people mixing it up with their paint where you have off-white in some form or fashion and then an accent color worked into a section of the cabinets. For those kitchens that are more open and get pretty good lighting, then it's easier to justify going with that dramatic color throughout. So which direction do you go? It's whatever floats your boat. But before you commit to anything, just factor in how long you plan on staying with that kitchen, the surrounding decor, and the more understated your kitchen looks now, that usually means the colors you use can be that much more overstated. It's all about balance. For us, my fiance and I wanted our cabinets to have a more subtle aesthetic that tied the walls and the countertops together. If you wanna see our process on how we picked that color, you can check out this video right over here and I'll tell you all about it.